Good afternoon. My name is Don Klein. I'm a retired pastor. I live in Franklin, Indiana. If you'd like to write to me, which I'd love to hear from you, my email is donc at mountauburnumc.org. We're looking at 1 Corinthians. Today, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 6, the ninth verse, and we'll go to the end of the chapter. My statement is, unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, sinful men will not be reigning in the kingdom of God. So we need to talk about that today, and Paul is going to share a lot on this. This is a, some hard verses. Let me be honest. I've struggled with them myself, and let's struggle together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come in your presence. Just open your word to us today. Help us to hear what you are telling us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Ninth verse, do not know, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, no adulterers, no uh, idolaters, adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, or, nor slanderers, no swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. And what and that is what some of you were. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. See, Paul has used a general term for immoral sexual behavior. Then he he identifies two kinds. Uh, adulterers and men who have sex with men. People engage in such practices as well as all the other practices that are listed are explicitly excluded from God's kingdom. See, we cannot live in sin and expect to inherit the kingdom of God. The unrighteous will not inherit it, Paul is saying. He's right. We don't have universal salvation. See, some of the people from Corinth in the church were saying, well, everything's okay. You know it's not. And see, all unrighteousness is a sin. In all reigning sin, may ever actual committed, every sin act committed deliberately and not repented will shut us out of the kingdom of God. See, we can argue over what is sin and what is not sin and whether this is a sin or not. But the Bible tells us what sin is. And if we do it deliberately, committed deliberately, and we don't repent of it, we cannot go into the kingdom of God. But now here's the good news. He says, what? And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Spirit of God. See, God washes us, he sanctifies us, and justifies us in the name of Jesus Christ in the Spirit of God. Washing, cleansing, sanctifying, being made pure and holy justified, declared righteous. Now in this, Paul may be quoting some of the Corinthian community, 
they seemed to imagine that they were much at liberty of the sins because they were not condemned by the laws of their country. And salvation came as a free gift. We should never look as Christians of what is acceptable in our country and try to set that as a standard from God. God's standards are a lot higher. In becoming higher every day because our country continues to accept more and more every day. One may become enslaved by these actions in which someone freely chose to indulge. So you might freely choose to indulge in, say, gambling. But all of a sudden, you will be enslaved to it. See, sin will tell you that it will free you when it actually will enslave you. Second Peter 2.19 says they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves to whatever has mastered them. Sin doesn't want to be part of your life. Sin wants to control your life. People that today that are enslaved to pornography started out just spending very little time in it. And over time, it took over more and more of themselves. This is here in verse 12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Again, he's talking about the Corinthian church that said everything, we can do whatever. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Let me also say that, especially in the American church, sin is too often accepted. And I'm sorry to say, sometimes even promoted. We are to be righteous not unrighteous. Do we commit sin every day? Yes, we're not perfect. But he's talking about sins that we we do that we do deliberately and we don't repent of. We're not even sorry for. Talks about food for the stomach because they were talking earlier about food and eating certain foods in the stomach for food, but God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself. Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. See, Corinthians were trying to claim that the physical acts of eating and digesting food had no bearing on on anyone, spiritual life. So then they also wanted to say that physical acts of promiscuity, sexual activity does not affect one's spiritual life. Our body is to be a temple for the Lord. It is to be used for service and honor to him. Now, some of the Corinthians also claimed there was no resurrection of the body or that their resurrection had already occurred in the spiritual sense. So it did not matter what someone did 
with their body. You know, we hear that today a lot. My body, I can do whatever I want. No? You're a son or daughter of God. It is his body. See, God's resurrection of Christ's body and eventually of the believer's body. Our body will be resurrected just like Christ if we're a believer. For it said the two who will become flesh, but he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. See, sexual relationships is more than a physical act. One flesh, two become one. So he says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside the body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you receive from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. See, there's also even a higher union than the marriage bond. That's the believer's spiritual union with Christ, which is the perfect model for the kind of unity should mark the marriage relationship. As we become one with Christ, we should become one with our partner in marriage. And what he's also saying here is flee. And it should be treated as sacred. That's the main theme here, folks. It's important. Yes, you're only given this one body here on earth, but you are responsible to take care of it. You must watch what we do. We are to be Righteous, holy people, not bound in sin. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget that. Help us to realize, Father, that we are to avoid sin at all costs. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today's kind of a hard message because the world says, this is okay. Do whatever you want. No. We need to serve you and honor you. Put everything in your hands, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great evening. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about marriage. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7.